Hello and welcome to another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 8, Lesson 7 on the area formula of a triangle. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey Kirk, this isn't 7th grade or 6th grade or 5th grade or whenever you first learn the area formula of a triangle. And that's true, all right? But today what we're going to see is how we can use right triangle trigonometry to help us find the areas of triangles that we couldn't find before we had right triangle trigonometry. So let's get right into it. All right, the basic formula. Now you've been finding the areas of triangles for many years now and should be comfortable with the basic formula and when it can, and importantly, cannot be used. So let's take a look at exercise number one. This should be a piece of cake. Right triangle ABC is shown below with sides lengths of six, eight, and 10 centimeters. What is the area of this triangle? Include proper units. All right, well again, you've been finding areas of triangles for a very long time, so I'm not gonna do this one example for you to remind you how to do it. I'd like you to pause the video right now and go ahead and find the area of this right triangle. All right, well the area of any triangle is one half base times height where the base and height have to be perpendicular to each other. All right, in this particular case, what that means is that the area of this triangle is gonna be one half of six times eight, and the 10 is totally irrelevant, all right? So the area here is one half base times height, right? Which is one half of eight times six, of course, I can do that multiplication in any order I want, so I'm just going to do the eight, the one half times eight first. Actually, I think I'm going to do the eight times six first, and get 48, and then one half times 48 is 24. And of course, the units are square centimeters or centimeters squared. All right. Now, hopefully, you got that. And more importantly, hopefully you understand why the 8 and 6 get used and not the 10. But in case you didn't, let me just remind you of something. Right? Anytime that we have a right triangle, what we really have is half of a rectangle. Right? Specifically, this right triangle is half of a rectangle that has a height or a you know, width of 6 centimeters and a length of 8 centimeters. And therefore, this rectangle has 48 48 squares that sit inside of them that are one centimeter by one centimeter. In other words, 48 square centimeters that lie inside of it. But because the right triangle is only half of that, that's where that one half factor comes in. Now that's exceptionally important, exceptionally, exceptionally important that you understand that that is where this is coming from and why we use the six and the eight, but the length of that hypotenuse is completely irrelevant. Now let's take a look at a situation that's not so simple. What if the triangle isn't right? Or what if the triangle is not a right triangle? Most triangles are not right triangles. So how do we find their areas? Interestingly enough, as long as you have two sides and the angle in between them, the area is relatively easy to find. So let's take a look at that scenario in exercise number two. Given triangle ABC shown with AC equals 10 inches, BC equals 16 inches, and the measure of angle C equals 62 degrees, answer the following. Letter A. Why would the expression 1 half times 16 times 10 not correctly calculate the area of triangle ABC. All right, well look, this is exceptionally important because this really gets to the heart of why can't we just use one half, you know, this side times this side. Pause the video right now and hopefully write down what you know to be true. Well, it's all about the fact that the 10 inch side and the 16 inch side aren't perpendicular to one another. Right? If they were, then we would be right back to where we were in the last problem, but the, <clears throat> the 10 inch and 16 inch sides are not perpendicular. In other words, although we could consider the 16 inch side to be the base, or the 10 inch side to be the base, neither one of them can be considered the height. 
So, let's take a look at how we might figure out the height in letter B. Explain how we could use trigonometry to find the length of the altitude drawn from point A to side BC. Sketch an auxiliary line to help justify. All right, well what I'd like you to do, right, is think about this for a minute. Let's draw in this altitude from A down to BC. Now, what I'd like to really be able to do is figure out that height, right? Because if I know that height and I know this base, then I can figure out the area of this triangle. So think about how you could do that with trigonometry. Pause the video now. All right, well, I can use right triangle trig. Right? I've got a right triangle here. I've also got a right triangle here. The problem with using the right triangle on the right side of this picture is that I don't know any of the angles in it other than the right angle. But this particular triangle, right, I have everything I need to figure out H. Right? I've got this right triangle, I've got 62 degrees, I've got 10 inches, and I've got H. Now you might say to yourself, yeah, but what about the 16? Maybe I could break that into 8 and 8. Well, I can't do that because this isn't an isosceles triangle. But I could certainly then use the sine ratio to solve for h. All right, and when I, once I have the h, well, then I have the height and the base, and I can figure out the area. Let's do that in letter C and D. Letter C. Let the length of the altitude from B equal h. Already done. Find the value of h. Expe express both as a product involving a trigonometric ratio and as a decimal to the nearest hundredth of an inch. All right, so we had that picture up there before, but let me, let me kind of draw it in as well. Right, I've got the H. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video right now and figure out the value of H. And again, I want it expressed in two ways. One way, right, both as a product involving a trigonometric ratio, you'll get that one first. And then once you have that, then change that into just a normal number to the nearest hundredth of an inch. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, here we go. Well, I can say, right, that the h is opposite and the 10 is the hypotenuse. So I can say that the sine of 62 degrees is equal to h divided by 10, which means h is equal to 10 times the sine of 62 degrees. All right, so that's expressing it as a product involving a trigonometric ratio, okay? And then if I actually want my height in terms of just a normal number, I will do 10 times the sine of 62. My calculator is in degree mode. Therefore, 8.83 inches. Okay, this is great, right? Because now, now I've got my height. I've got my base, so let's do letter D. Find the area of triangle ABC to the nearest hundredth of a square inch. All right, so we know that the area of our triangle is one half base times height. That's going to be one half of my base, which is 16, times my height. And now, in order to avoid any kind of rounding issues, Instead of actually putting in my 8.83 inches, I'm going to actually put my height in as 10 times sine 62. Again, the great thing about that is it means that I don't need to do any kind of rounding until right at the end. So let's throw all of that in here and see what we get. I'm going to do 0.5 as my 1 half times 16 times 10 times the sine of 62. And when I do that, I get my area is 70.64 square inches. And that's it, right? So simple, right? But we couldn't have done this prior to today 
because, or at least prior to the unit that we're working in now, because we didn't have a way of coming up with the height. But now, as long as I've got two sides and the angle in between them, I can always drop that altitude and come up with my height. Let's get some practice on this. All right, exercise number three. Find the area of triangle EFG shown below expressed to the nearest tenth of a square foot. All right, well, see if you can do what we did in that last problem to figure out the area of this triangle. All right, here we go. Well, again, the question is, how do we drop that altitude? Well, in this situation, it makes most sense to drop it like this. Okay. Now, we don't worry about the 20 at all. All that really matters is this particular right triangle where we've got the hypotenuse, 14 feet, we've got one of the angles, 37 degrees, and we're looking for this opposite side. Now the great thing is, and this will be true in all of these problems, the trigonometric ratio that we need to use is the sine ratio. Okay, we are having the opposite side and the hypotenuse, and so I can say that the tangent Oh, the tangent. <laughs> Here I said we're going to use the sine ratio and then uh, went ahead and used the tangent ratio. The sine of 37 degrees is equal to h divided by 14, which means my height is 14 times the sine of 37 degrees. So now my area is going to be one half of my base, which is 20, times my height, which is 14 times the sine of 37. And look, if you feel more comfortable in actually writing out what your height is accurate to a bunch of decimal places, that's quite okay. Just make sure wherever they're telling you to round to, make sure to take that height out maybe, I don't know, three additional decimal places or two additional decimal places. Since I'm looking for the area to the nearest tenth, maybe I would take my height out to the nearest thousandth, right? Anyway, I like just doing it like this, right? Then I can do all my rounding just at the end. And here we go. I'm going to have 0.5 times 20 times 14 times the sine of 37. And that is going to give me an area equal to 84.3 square feet. 84.3? Yep, absolutely. All right, it's simple. You know, it's probably easier than many of the right triangle trig problems that we have been doing, right? Because all we're doing is using right triangle trig to figure out what the height of the triangle is compared to some base that we also know. Now, to make matters even easier, we can generalize what we see here to find a formula for the area of a triangle given we know the lengths of two sides and the angle in between the two sides. So we're going to come up with a formula right now where you don't even have to do what we just did, where you can just take this formula and be like, here it is, here's how you calculate the area. But in order to do this, I have to introduce some new things. Let's take a look at exercise number four. In triangle ABC, sides opposite a given angle have been labeled using the equivalent lowercase letter. This is standard notation for these types of problems. And let me explain what I mean by this, okay? Here I've got triangle ABC. And notice the side across from angle A, I've, I've named lowercase a. And the side opposite angle B, I've named lowercase b. And the side opposite angle C, I've, lo I've labeled lowercase c. That is very standard when you look at the types of these types of problems that relate side lengths of a triangle to the angles that are opposite of them. Anyhow. The altitude from vertex A to side BC has been drawn and its length has been labeled as H. Letter A says, using trigonometry, solve for the value of H in terms of B and angle C. Okay? So I'm talking about using this right triangle, and I could use the one on the, on the right as well, but I'm just trying to illustrate something now by using the one on the left. Let's use this one on the left and figure out what the value of h is based on the value of b and the value of the angle c. Well, just like in my prior problems, h is the opposite side, b is the hypotenuse, right? So I can say that the 
sine of angle C is equal to H divided by B, and therefore H is equal to B times the sine of angle C. All right. Now that is specifically the height drawn perpendicular to A. All right. Now we could also come over here and we could say, well, H actually was C times the sine of B. That is also true. That's also true. But right now we're just going to work with it like this. Now, letter B, using A, give a formula for the area of triangle ABC in terms of A, B, and angle C. All right? So keep in mind, right? A and B are side lengths, and angle C is the angle between those two. Well now, we know the height is B times sine C, so the area is one half of the base, which is A, times the height, which is B, times sine C. All right? And there is the formula for the area of any triangle. Now why do I claim that? I claim that because what we really have here is basically just saying, look, the area of any triangle can be found as doing one half times the product of two side lengths times the sine of the angle in between them. And we could, we could look at that with these two sides and that angle, these two sides and that angle. So let's actually summarize this. All right, the area formula for a triangle. The area of any triangle can be found as one-half the product of the two side lengths and the sine of the angle in between the two known sides. For triangle ABC, the area would be either one-half AB times the sine of C, or one-half BC times the sine of A, or one-half AC times the sine of B. Don't get wrapped up in all the letters. Those really don't matter. The point is, right, if we have something like exercise number five, Find the area of each triangle shown below, round your answers to the nearest tenth, and use appropriate units, show the calculation that leads to your answer. Well, if we've got this situation, I don't have anything labeled as A, B, C, or D. The point is, I can find the area of this triangle by doing one half of eight times 15 times the sine of the angle in between them. All right, that's what this formula says. All right, so the area is one half times 8 times 15 times the sine of 75. It's that simple, right? And then it's just an issue of calculator use. 0. 0.5 times 8 times 15 times the sine of 75. Always the sine, never the cosine or the tangent in these problems. And we end up getting the area is what? Round your answers to the nearest tenth. So my area is, oh, that's going to be a little bit nasty. My area is 58.0 square centimeters. A little bit tricky there on the rounding because of the, the 57.95, but still, 58.0 square centimeters. Boy, does that make finding the area of a triangle simple, right? And it accounts for the fact that the triangle may not be a right triangle. Right? So that angle in between here is not 90. By the way, if the angle was 90 and you shoved the 90 down in here, it would also work just fine. All right? Why don't you go ahead and find the area in triangle B? Maybe it's not triangle B, but like letter B. Again, here we go. It's this simple. The area is 1 half of 23 times 40 times the sine of 22 degrees. And it doesn't matter whether that angle is acute, obtuse, or anything else. 0. 0.5 times 23 times 40 times the sine of 22. Throwing that sine of 22 in there really kind of gives us a height. All right, so area equals 172.3, and in this case, the units are square yards, 172.3. Easy. And again, if you look back, right, I'm gonna go way back, right? If you look back at what we even did here, 
right? In the first problem, 1 half 16 times 10 times sine 62, there it was, right? 1 half 16 times 10 times the sine of 62. That's why I kind of wanted to leave my height this way. Same song, second verse here, right? I had 1 half times 20 times 14 times the sine of 37, all right? Every time, 1 half of one side times the other side times the sine of the angle in between them. Now, if you don't have the angle in between them, then you're in trouble, right? Then it's not going to work, okay? Let's take a look at exercise number six. In triangle RST, RS equals 11 centimeters, ST equals 27, 20 centimeters, the measure of angle T equals 50 degrees, and the measure of angle S equals 32 degrees. Determine the area of triangle RST to the nearest hundredth of a square centimeter. All right, what I'd like you to do is draw a good picture on this one and see if you can come up with the right answer. And again, it doesn't even particularly have to be a good picture. It doesn't have to be accurate in any way, shape, or form. Let me just draw a random triangle. This is triangle RST. Uh, RS is 11, ST is 20, the measure of angle T is 50 degrees, and the measure of angle S is 32 degrees. And I wanted to throw one at you that looked like this because I wanted you to have to make a choice, right? Do I use the 32 degrees or do I use the 50 degrees, right? And the answer is I have to use the 32 degrees because it's the one that's in between, right? I have to have a side angle side scenario, right? Take me all the way back to unit three with triangle congruence theorems, right? I have to have side angle side. So my area now is going to be 1 half times 11 times 20 times the sine of 32 degrees. The 50 was really just thrown in there, you know, to try to throw you off, to be quite frankly. You know, try to, try to make you figure out which of those two angles you had to use. But as long as you know that the angle has to be between the two sides that you're using, then you're all set. So my area must be 58.29 square centimeters to the nearest hundredth of a square centimeter, 58.29, all right? So sometimes, like in the last few problems, right, you're just given the two sides and the angle in between. Sometimes you gotta figure out which angle to use. Okay, so let's summarize, right? Up to this point in time, whenever you've found the area of a triangle, you've always had to have a base and a height that were perpendicular to each other. And if you didn't have it, right, you either had to figure out the height by maybe using something like the Pythagorean theorem, or you simply couldn't figure out what the area of the triangle was. Now, as long as we have two sides of a triangle and the angle in between them, known as the included angle, then we can always find its area by using the formula one half a times B times the sine of C, where C is that angle that's located between sides A and B. Now, this may seem like a very specialized use of trigonometry, and in a certain sense it is, but we're gonna see many instances from now until the end of the course where we wanna be able to use that area formula. So we're gonna get lots of practice on it from here until the end of the course. For right now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.